Know what's great? Giving holiday gifts. Know what's better? Spending less on those gifts by finding the lowest price by using Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. It saves you money by scanning over 20,000 internet sites like Best Buy and eBay when you're shopping online. I'm into wedge boots lately, and I found a cute pair perfect for one of my holiday outfits at Macy's.com. I thought the boots were a great price already, but thanks to Honey, I was delighted to also save $9 on my holiday find. If you're buying gifts this holiday season, then you need Honey. If you're not, you probably know someone who is, so do them a solid and tell them about Honey. Honey can help make sure that you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com SS. That's joinhoney.com SS. The chills and thrills continue on the Something Scary podcast. Hear more for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hey, I'm Marquia. Want to hear something scary? Call me Bozu. Old Japanese myths often detailed sea serpents and monsters swimming beneath the sea on long voyages. It was mostly all colorful explanations for bad weather, but some tales claim to be anything but fiction. Let's learn about the monstrous Omi Bazu, inspired by a story submission from Marble. Captain Otto had faced many storms in his long career at sea. He could read the skies and smell coming storms in the air. Otto had lost many good crew members and friends over the years. Yet, in his old age, Otto's latest crew merely thought of him as senile and superstitious, albeit experienced. He spoke of oily serpents and monstrous fish with great barbed tails that could cut ships in half. Otto would whisper about the Omi Bozu, monks and priests who were thrown into the ocean and drowned, becoming restless spirits enraged and merciless towards any ship unfortunate enough to cross their path. Otto's crew could only roll their eyes. Their ship was delivering textiles to a nearby island. They had no fear of superstitions. But one clear day, Otto was especially anxious. The crew thought their captain was worrying needlessly. The sky was an endless blue, and the sea's gentle winds and waves were idyllic. It was smooth sailing. But then, the wind picked up. The waves grew choppy and rough as clouds darkened the sky. The crew shouted, manning their stations. Otto stood, fear-struck on the deck, staring out into the frothing ocean. A thick fog choked the air, and soon the crew could barely make out the horizon. The ship began to rumble, and sailors cried out in alarm as a dark figure erupted from the waves. Its skin was blacker than squid ink, with water dripping off like oil, and its strange bulbous head pulsed beneath the rain. Its terrible frog eyes were fixed in a glare as it raised a tentacle-like arm and swiped across the deck, sending screaming sailors flying into churning waters. The crew bellowed, racing to the ship's cannons to defend themselves. Otto waved his arms and shouted, ordering the crew to bring him empty barrels. This was a only Bazu, and Otto only knew of one way to defeat it. Present the angry spirit with a bottomless barrel for it to fill with water and escape during the confusion. But Otto's crew believed that their captain finally had broken and dismissed his orders, readying the cannons instead. The Omubazu fists crashed against the hull as they fired. Otto watched in horror as the Omubazu then reached for the mast and pulled. He desperately grabbed a red barrel and offered it up to the Omubazu's rage. The Omubazu seemed to watch him as Otto felt himself slide down the deck alongside his crew as the ship capsized, cannons still firing. Plummeting into the freezing water, Otto struggled to hold his breath and sank into the darkness. When Captain Otto awoke, the sea was calm. He was bobbing along the water in the red barrel all alone. Relief washed over him, followed swiftly by guilt. It seemed that he was the only Bazu's sole survivor. His offering of the barrel proved successful. Looking around, Otto spotted a ship not far away and began to wave and shout. 
The ship came closer and Otto once again was overcome with relief. As the men on the ship helped him aboard, Otto's urgent explanation of what happened to him and his crew escalated to hysterics. He screamed of the Omubazu and the way it decimated his ship, grabbing and shaking the sailors, begging them to head to land as quickly as possible. These new men exchanged apprehensive glances and all sounded like the ravings of a sun-baked castaway to them, and they locked Otto in an iron cell in the brig. As the ship continued on its journey, Otto watched from his porthole in the brig, the sky was clear and the day was peaceful. It made him uneasy. As Otto watched, he began to see debris that looked familiar. Pieces of a ship's hull, the portion of a mass, crates of textiles. That was his ship. His blood ran cold. He began to howl and bang against the brig. The wave slowly became bigger, crashing violently against the porthole. Otto could see a fog rolling in and the sky darkening. The crew above was too busy preparing for the oncoming storm to hear his screams. Otto watched helplessly as a familiar dark figure rose up from the sea, its terrible eyes piercing Otto through the porthole. The ship rumbled and creaked as the only bazu assailed the crew. Otto was thrown about his cell while cannons boomed above him. Wood splintered and exploded when the Omibazu's limb crashed down through the deck, splitting the ship in two. Otto's cell began to fill with water. He desperately rattled the bars and screamed for help, but the rest of the crew were dead or dying. Otto could only look up into the face of the Omibazu as he sank beneath the waves once more. The holiday season is here and it's almost scary how busy it can get. If you're like me, you love saving money by buying secondhand clothes, but you also have less time to go thrifting due to the holidays. ThreadUp, the world's largest online thrift store, is a great option for you. It makes it easy to get thrift store pricing with the convenience of online shopping. Take me for example. I could have spent hours sifting through racks or a lot of money on a hefty price tag for a holiday outfit. Instead, I used ThreadUp.com and in no time at all, I bought a Kenneth Cole dress for $19. There is something for everyone at ThreadUp. You can score coach handbags for $25, J. Crew sweaters for $20. There are loads of secondhand brand name finds waiting for you and all up to 90% off estimated retail. There's a sustainable and more affordable way to get through the season. And for something scary listeners, here's a little extra holiday cheer. You can shop today for an extra 30% off your first order at threadup.com SS. And as an added time saving tip, personalize your search by budget, size, styles, and favorite brands to find exactly what you're looking for. Get 30% off your first order at threadup.com slash SS. That's 30% off your first order at threadup.com slash SS. Try ThreadUp today. Terms apply. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com slash snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarl.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings, sweet dreams.